Look to the skies because there's a deadly Space Marine airborne threat inbound to take out the enemy air assets. Hello and welcome back to Orspex Tactics, the strategy and tactics focused 40k channel where we're all about getting the most out of our miniatures on the tabletop. Today we'll be looking at a Forge World air support unit for Codex Space Marines, the sleek and deadly Xiphon Interceptor. In this review we'll take a quick look at the Xiphon's datasheet, any ways that we can get more out of it through buffs and stratagems on the table, and how I would deploy the Xiphon as part of a Space Marine army list. In the background, the Xiphon is a Astartes fighter aircraft that shares some similarities with the Thunderbolt. The fighter's brutal performance and manoeuvrability means that having a Space Marine pilot is highly advantageous, as their body can withstand the enormous G-forces that the fighter can put on the pilot. The Xiphon is both capable of atmospheric and space flight, and it carries a devastating payload of LAS cannons and missile launchers to engage and destroy enemy flyers and aircraft. So let's take a look at what this formidable plane can do on the table. So the Xiphon Interceptor will cost you a fairly pricey 240 points, and it is of course a flyer for the Adeptus Astartes. For that princely investment you get a fairly standard but heavily armed Astartes flyer profile, it has a movement of 20 to 50 when it's got full wounds remaining, a weapon skill of 6+, plus, ballistic skill 3+, plus, strength 6, toughness 7, 11 wounds, 2 attacks, leadership 8 and a 3 up save. It is worth noting that for some reason this one degrades a little bit earlier than most similar vehicle profiles. When it has 7 or fewer wounds, its ballistic skill drops to 4+, plus, and when it has 3 or less wounds left, it will be hitting on a 5+. plus. Now the main strength of the Xiphon is in its heavy war gear. It packs two twin LAS cannons and a Xiphon missile battery. Now we all know what twin LAS cannons do, but that Xiphon missile battery is pretty interesting. It has a 60 inch range, is strength 6, AP minus 2 and a flat damage of 3. Meaning this will certainly put a decent amount of hurt on whatever target you throw it at. As for prime targets it's probably best at taking out things like space marine aggressors, 3 wound infantry, they still wound on a 3 and have decent armour penetration against but it's certainly not bad at chipping in to down other flyers, particularly toughness 6 flyers. The plane has the Angels of Death special rule, giving it access to combat doctrines for an extra pip of AP whenever you're in the Devastator doctrine, so those twin LAS cannons will be AP-4 and the Xiphon missile launcher will be AP-3. It has all the normal flyer special rules, this one does not have a hover mode, so it'll be hard to hit at all times with a minus 1 penalty to ballistic skill. It has the supersonic special rule, meaning that it can only pivot 90 degrees before each move, making the positioning a little bit trickier, and the airborne special rule, meaning that it can't charge, and only flying units can charge it. It also has crash and burn, exploding in the normal way for D3 mortal wounds on the roll of a 6. Finally, it has two of its own unique special rules, the first one being terminal targeting, where this flyer does not suffer the penalty to hit rolls for moving and firing with heavy weapons. Certainly a big advantage on a flyer that you are certain will be moving every single turn. It's pretty nice to have this hard baked into the points cost of the flyer. It also has the Skyborne Predator special rule, which means when targeting units that can fly, you add plus one to your hit rolls. So essentially it will have a two plus ballistic skill at all times against any units with the fly special rule, which of course might be affected by modifiers if it is actually trying to take out enemy flyers. Say if it did happen to be taking aim at a flying tank, such as a Tau Hammerhead, in Devastator Doctrine, those four LAS cannons would do an average of 7 or 8 wounds to the hammerhead, so this thing can really pack a punch. And if you fire the missiles at the same targets, they'll typically do around about 2 wounds a turn, though obviously they're damage 3, so it'll likely be either 3 wounds or no wounds. So you can typically expect around about 10 wounds on a flying vehicle that doesn't have any negative to hit modifiers, and that's without any other buffs. So overall, the Xiphon Interceptor is a very fragile plane for the points, that's incredibly dangerous against enemy vehicles, and particularly so against units that can fly. So let's have a chat about the other ways that we can get more out of it. First of all, if we talk about chapter tactics, a few of them can be fairly helpful. In general, it's not a plane that massively cares about what chapter it's in, but some can help out. Iron Hands for a 6-up Feel No Pain type save will help alleviate some of the plane's durability issues, and also not degrading as fast is particularly potent on it, because it degrades a bit easier than some other vehicles. Boosted Overwatch isn't a bad thing, and automatically re-rolling 1s to hit should mean that your plane's typically hitting on 2s re-rolling 1s. Very, very reliable indeed. Imperial Fist is another good one that likes to hang out in the Devastator Doctrine. Ignores cover is great for all that nasty firepower, as is plus 1 damage against tanks and vehicles, which are, after all, its intended target. Imperial Fist's Xiphons 
would typically do around about 12 or 13 wounds to your average flying tank and should have a pretty good chance at one-shotting most vehicles. And of course this only gets nastier if you apply some of their other buffs such as the Tank Hunter's Stratagem. As for other chapters, Salamanders or Master Artisans are both great choices for this guy. Having a lot of powerful shots that you can re-roll those hits and wounds for will certainly increase the damage output. Possibly comboing with the Salamander's Librarian powers, Fire Shield and increasing its toughness might make it a bit more survivable and again help alleviate the durability issues. Raven Guard or the Stealthy trait can also help put this thing in cover when it's greater than 12 inches of the enemy, which in general it should be. Having a 2 plus save will certainly help it keep alive. It doesn't have the biggest ever synergies with the other chapters, but one thought for the Dark Angels is its synergy with the Dark Shroud, as minus 2 to hit could again help keep it alive for a bit longer. And the Dark Shroud is fast enough to keep up with this thing. In terms of character support, planes tend to be fairly independent due to their fast movement not being able to hover within overlapping character auras. That being said, you can absolutely set up turn 1 with the aim to fly into the buffing bubble of some characters. So you put your characters 20 inches away from the plane and then it can fly up to them to take advantage of all of those nice re-rolls and things on turn 1. This is a pretty powerful use for chapter masters and lieutenants particularly if they're already buffing other units, as the Xiphon has a lot of very scary guns, so any V-Rolls will be much appreciated. Chaplain Litanies could also be effective on the Xiphon as well, as they can get cast before it moves, meaning that you could soup it up with plus one to hit and plus one to wound before it goes flying off to hunt its prey. We already mentioned that Librarians can be handy to buff its defence, like the Salamanders one. The Iron Hands also have a psychic power to repair vehicles and increase the armour save. And you can also use Might of Heroes from the main codex to make it Toughness 8, which can certainly help protect it a bit against a lot of enemy firepower. Finally, if it is flying next to characters, you might be able to get a Tech Marine to repair some wounds on it, but obviously this is going to be a little bit more opportunistic, as they really won't be able to keep up with the plane. In terms of stratagems, the Xiphon's an incredibly destructive force on the battlefield, so any codex specific ones that allow it to get a better damage output, such as the Salamander's plus one to wound option, the Iron Hand's extra wounds on sixes, or Imperial Fist tank hunters can all be very handy. And also anything that helps it become a bit tougher as well, or heal some wounds, is certainly valuable on such a expensive and fragile fighter. From the main book, Armor of Contempt could help it shrug some mortal wounds in a sticky situation, though if you're getting it exposed to a lot of smites then it's not ideal in the first place. And besides things like chapter master rerolls, and maybe the old command reroll to a wound or a damage roll, that's about it for some stratagems from the main codex. So you're kind of best off looking to your own supplement codex or book for any other options. So in game the challenge is to keep this thing alive and shooting for several turns to beat down all of your opponent's armour. With a very long range and very long movement, this thing can threaten literally everything in the board turn 1. So turn 1 you should be deploying it as far back as possible or behind any line of sight blocking terrain that's about that can shield the fire from enemy guns. With such a huge points investment you really can't afford to have this thing killed turn 1 because it doesn't have that great defensive profile and it's a potential very easy win for your opponent in the early game. I'd also think about trying to deploy it so it can fly into those character auras that we mentioned if you do have characters that can buff it but to be honest this isn't essential. It does have pretty good firepower for its points just on its own and you aren't going to get more than one turn of auras most of the time anyway. With flyers you really need to think about their flight path turn on turn so position them not only where they want to be this turn but think about where they're going to want to be next turn and make sure that you can move them there with that 90 degree turn before they move. Make sure that you don't position yourself in a way that's going to force you to fly off the board, which is certainly a threat against some horde armies and things, when you have a plane that doesn't have a hover mode. Against some armies, you're just not going to be able to keep the Xiphon alive for more than a turn, due to decent anti-air, long-range las cannons, or maybe a lot of ignores line of sight weapons with long ranges. Here it might well be worth thinking about using the Xiphon more aggressively. With its heavy payload and huge movement, it certainly does have the potential to be swooping into your opponent's backfield. You can use this to snipe out enemy characters that are exposed. Most will have a pretty decent chance of dying straight out to two twin las cannons and a missile battery, which could be pretty key if they are vital to your opponent's plans. In the current Space Marine meta, they can also be great for hunting Thunderfire cannons, flying so they can see some units that are hiding out of line of sight and putting two twin las cannons into two Thunderfires. Gives you a reasonable chance of at least taking one of them out, which could certainly help your army for the rest of the game. In general though, if you can outrange your opponent's firepower, 
both with the Las Cannon's long range and the Xiphon's very good movement characteristic, you absolutely should. And if you can keep it out of harm's way for several turns while shooting at your opponent's tanks and vehicles, then the Xiphon could certainly justify its inclusion in your army very easily. In terms of list optimization, the main contender from Codex Space Marines is the Stormhawk Interceptor for the same role as the Xiphon. The most similar loadout that you can give the Stormhawk is the Last Talon Typhoon Missile Launcher and the Twin Assault Cannons, and this clocks in at 200 points as opposed to the Xiphon's 240. Now in general, point for point, this will probably do more damage to the vast majority of targets compared with the Xiphon's armament, but it's worth noting that these options are a fair bit more close range, meaning that you don't just have the option of flying around your own backfield or the edges of the board, keeping the enemy at arm's length. The Stormhawk also has the advantage of the Infernum Halo Launcher, giving it an extra minus one to hit when flying units target it, which is a notable survivability buff, but it is only effective against certain unit types, which does limit it somewhat. Overall, from a competitive setting, I do think that the Stormhawk is a little bit better at the moment, just because it's around 40 points fewer, and as it has a similar offensive and defensive profile, and it's a little bit more flexible in the sort of targets it can engage, for me it does take the first place in a competitive type list particularly so in Iron Hands, where you can have the advantage of moving and shooting for no penalty, just like the Xiphon has. That being said, I don't think that the Stormhawk does outcompete the Xiphon for every single role. The Xiphon definitely has its own niche, which is a long-range backfield sort of plane that can put in a massive amount of firepower on the enemy from a very long way away, hopefully safe from the reprisals that might have taken out the Stormhawk. So for me, that's a good potential role that allows the Xiphon to compete even in more competitive play. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on the Xiphon Interceptor down in the comments below. It's really quite a cool model, and I'm sure it will be a blast to use on the tabletop. If you've enjoyed this review, consider subscribing to Allspets Tactics for more Space Marine content. We'll hopefully have a Tech Marine review later in the week, and I have covered the vast majority of other Space Marine units in the Codex by now, so check that out if it interests you. If you'd like to support the channel, and you happen to live in the UK, I do have an Element Games affiliate link in the description below. If you're thinking about ordering yourself some model soldiers in the near future, I certainly recommend Element as a good discount retailer who can ship straight to your door. And if you give the link a click before making the order, then a percentage of the profits goes to Auspex Tactics and helps support the channel without costing you any extra. So if you are thinking about getting yourself some Space Marines in the near future, please consider that. Thanks very much for listening, and I will hope to see you guys next time.